Hey, good morning everybody. My name is Kevin and welcome to Kev's Vibe of the Day where I frame up your day with something positive or different or an alternative way of looking at your day. So with that said, let's get straight to the cards. I've got a good one for you today, one that I hope will lift you up if you're feeling a little bent or twisted or a bit worse for wear. So here we go. Um, did a quick shuffle this morning, a little meditation on what did I want this message for you to be. Um, and the Lord came up. So the Lord is the counterpart to the lady in this deck, which, by the way, is Kyle Gray's um, Ancestry, uh, Angels and Ancestors Oracle deck. Um, if you go to his website, uh, kylegray.uk.co or .co.uk, any Google search or any search, if you look up Kyle Gray, at some point you'll find his email. There's a great deal of um, free information, a lot of free meditations, um, great courses. He's one of um, Hay House's most popular authors. I have several of his books and obviously I am now studying. Um, but besides that, rather fragrant plug um this is where you can purchase or look at or research any more of the tools and really um, i'm urging fo folks who feel like they may be connected to something of spiritual elk to dig into what that might be and where you may feel drawn anyway let's get back to the message of today um so the lord in most traditional tarot decks are is seen as the emperor uh, the lady is seen as the empress so the lady really comes with the feminine version of the things we're manifesting and the things the gifts that we're bringing to our table um the gifts that come from spirit the gifts that you bring to the world the lord is more about self-assured confidence so in the image we see um depicted here uh, a guide that seems to be commanding a confidence commanding um a groundedness he looks to be like the landowner that lords and ladies and all of those of the realm and while the image brings up thoughts and feelings of a more authoritative or um masterful um regal uh, opulent type of male energy the lord still represents the call to step forward and um serve those who are underserved so there is still a level of compassion as shown by the sheeps he has a sheep staff in his hand so he's leading sheep he's He's guiding sheep or guiding people. And in this particular message for you today, the 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 overall um, um, feeling or thought or or energy is to feel guided by your own self assuredness, your own self confidence. This is about stepping forward and. Um, seeing yourself as a powerful human being working through and to the thoughts feelings and beliefs that what you want to accomplish what you'd like to have happen we're entering in a phase i believe and once again these are my thoughts and my beliefs that i'm just as most people are meandering through what seems to be an emotional, mental obstacle course of change. And I myself realised a little while ago, probably a few months ago, that there was an awful lot of no sense, call it nonsense, whatever, but a great deal of fractious energies, fractious thoughts, chaotic behavior, random acts, um, and they were not necessarily moving anyone forward 
or anything forward in any real direction. A little bit like what I imagine would be backstage at one of those talent, entertainment talent contest shows. Rather chaotic, rather maybe organised, not organised. And so my point really is what might appear to be all over the place is really all over the place. When society, culture, the world, the globe, whatever you want to look at it, feels as if there is no direction, there is no path forward. And what was, what appeared to be before, what went before, has already come apart. So much so that there has already been a shift in consciousness, a shift in the way we live our lives, a shift in the way we do our daily work. Yet, in all of that, when we get down to the local um, environment, if you will, your home environment, your work environment, your people, your friends, all of those things, we're still moving forward in a way and still able to, we've fed ourselves, we've, you know, might have taken trips, planned them differently, understood that there are different rules and regulations, but all the way through for the last 18 months, almost two years, those of us who sort of move forward gently and paying attention have managed to do it. So this message for today is remind yourself how you've already stood in your power. Remind yourself where you've already found that self-confidence, where you've already gone and looked for the positive way of following and more importantly how that has shown up for you in a positive way. So to, to kind of recap it, you and I, we, all of us have done something quite positive in and amongst something that seemed quite chaotic. Um, that is where you shine. Take the intuition and the power back. For a long time, most of us may have been taught, told, shown, directed in a certain direction, whether that's been with work, with relationships, um, with, with friends, with family, with children, relatives, whatever that looks like. We've been driven, directed, working with those constructs or those people's construct. And now, particularly in 2021, we have entered into this world where there are some things we definitely know work and they are pleasing and they're speaking to us. But we also know that there are some things that are no longer possible and have no longer happened. In my own experience, what did work for me, and I'll share it, not expecting you to do this, is when anything comes to a complete stop, and I had uh, 10 years ago, well, almost 10 years ago, something that came to a complete stop, and it threw me for a loop. I had a long time to gather my thoughts and change direction, and I had to go through the grieving process of what stopped. I had to um, change the way I looked at things, including looking at all the negative behavior that I was myself um, exhibiting. Uh, the blame, the guilt, the pointing fingers, the woe is me, the pity party, all of that. And that took a while. What I learned from it is that all of that fussing, all of that carrying on, all of that chat, chat, chit chat, all of this crazy mind mess was unnecessary. All I had to do was to work out and realise it's okay to move forward and let it drop. When something comes to a complete stop, it doesn't mean 
that that's it, that we're done. There's no more. Forget it. And it also, most importantly, does not mean that you failed or that you did something wrong or that something was not whatever. You can't look, especially when there was an expectation that this was going to continue. You can't look at it like somehow you failed, somehow you did something wrong, unless it's clear as day that, yeah, this is not in your highest good, but you did it anyway. But you also knew that. You were not listening. So for this card right now and the message that's with it, when things come to an end, as they did for me a year ago, all of it came to a grinding halt. I then was reminded at how well things turned out the last time when I got out of my own way and realised there was a new opportunity showing up. There were new things coming. And back then, I immersed myself in the practice of yoga. I immersed myself in the comforting love of the Yoga One community. I um, found a way to pick myself up and move forward and ended up realizing that I have a voice and I can teach people, which was not something, even though I taught hairdressing, teaching people yoga and teaching people how to transform themselves was a whole different ball game. I had to let some of my ego go bye-bye. I had to get out of my own way again. Now, at this point, when everything flopped and stopped and came to an end, now I realize, oh, now I have other gifts, other opportunities that I can do. So let's bring it on. My my message in this was using the the power and the confidence and the um, just go with the seat of your pants and see what happens. You will always move forward. What I'm encouraging you to do is not to give up on your self-confidence, not to give up on your inner warrior, not to, you know, sit back and become, I don't like using terms like victim, rescuer, all of those things, because that's more psychological. That's more, um, that's therapy talk. And I'm really saying that I'm more of a cheerleader in your cor in your corner, um, uh, one of you on your fan base. Um, because, you know, at any given moment, we can so go into those labels and those roles of being this and feeling that. And it always makes other people play a role. So I'm hoping I'm making sense that, um, you know, saying you're playing a victim, that means in your mind, in your eye, somebody else has got to be a villain and someone else has got to be a rescuer. Well, we're not talking about other people. We're talking about how we're conducting ourselves in a confident way. And before you choose what role you're playing in the drama, forget that because just step straight forward. In other words, you don't, if a light bulb goes out, you don't sit and fuss about how now you can't read your book or how now you can't see or how now this is so dark and how now it's so scary. You go get another light bulb, screw it in, off you go. When the power goes out, yeah, there might be a little bit, oh my goodness, I was in the middle of cooking. Or I was in the middle of writing an email and push, there's no power. Well, thank goodness we've got battery backups. But the point I'm making is there are many times in our lives where things stop like that and we just roll on, keep going, change it, let's move on. Apply that to a bigger sense of your life. It's interesting I used to look at folks who did that kind of thing, like, whoop, click, off we go, bang. Well, my gosh, they have no no thought for, hang on a minute. That was me before. Now I'm one of those people that, whoop, come on, let's go. Two clicks and a twist. Don't let the, don't let the dirt pile up under your feet. I was talking to a good friend yesterday about what we've accomplished in this year of COVID. <laughs> Quite a lot. I chose to keep going. I chose to use what's going on right now today. I chose to look at something that was positive, look at something that was upbeat, look at something I knew I could do and go forward. And then anything that was 
weird, strange, go for that too. Anything that lit me up or made me feel like I'm a little intimidated, like these cards, they intimidated me. I didn't even open the box for a while. And I'm like, well, that's stupid. That's ridiculous. How can a box of playing cards or oracle cards in this sense be so intimidating? Why am I intimidated by them? It was ridiculous. I opened them up, looked at the images, and they began telling me a story. Same with you. We're entering a whole new era. We're walking through a field of change. Your, you, me, we, all of us can choose what the field is. Is it a magical wonderland that there is a different type of ride at every turn? Or is it this maniacal obstacle course that we have to keep on surviving? That we have to keep on, we have to keep on, we have to keep on. And that really is up to us. We are at the starting gate. Well, actually, we've gone past the starting gate. We are on that journey. There is absolutely positively no going back. The sun, the moon, the planets, the stars, Jupiter, Saturn. If you're into astrology, don't turn around and say, oops, we made a wrong turn when we were retrograding or doing what we were doing. And oh dear, the sun was not supposed to eclipse then. Let's do a redo. Nah, -uh. the energy's moving forward. The Lord, the emperor of your own life is showing up to say, what do you want today? Then assume and take the position that you already have it. There's a little caveat in there I want to add before I get to Journey to the Heart message. Ensure that when you're choosing something that speaks to you, that you're confident about, that lights you up and, and gets you going and moving you forward, that is your right. That is your journey. That is what you are being called to do. The small caveat I want to add to it is this. The ego is right along for the ride and the ego might show up in the form of other people's opinion of you. The ego then wants to create a sneaky little situation that can cause you to quickly snap back. For example, we'll just say you've made your decision, you're really excited about it, you're putting your plans together and you've decided I'm no longer doing this, this doesn't work for me, it doesn't serve me. That is your spirit guide and your angels. Whatever you want to believe that's around you and they're there, invite them in. That's them showing you the great way and the wonderful work and the positive pathway you're following. The ego then second guesses it. And because of what you already know, because of what you've already experienced, because of what you're comfortable with, it may cause you to make assumptions. And the assumptions show up in the form of other people's opinion. Oh, I don't know about that. This one might not like it. That one might not like it. Oh my goodness, I don't know what that person's going to say. Oh my goodness. Blah, blah. And the other part of the ego is saying, if you move forward with a heartfelt plan, yet the energy behind the heartfelt plan is to show off, to push yourself above someone else, to take glee in your success at someone else's, oh no. In other words, your life moving forward, the positive things that you're doing, the only person that should be applauding you and what you've accomplished is you. It is not to show off. It is not to, no, 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 it's not that. That's ego speaking. And trust me, it doesn't go anywhere decent. When we start messing around in those awkward personality issues, we create more of it. 
we're basically saying this is who we are. We are more about, I'll show you, I'll see what you can do, blah, blah, blah. You should be the star in your own life, showing up for you, showing up to be your biggest cheerleader. It's not for other people to say, oh my goodness, look how wonderful this is, or put you down or knock you back. My own experience has been in in my career, both in hair and other things, as you show up authentically, as you start peeling back the masks and the robes and the costumes and all the things we put on, the airs and the graces for whatever we want to create, not create, to show the world, this is who I want you to believe I am. When you know yourself, that's not really who you are. But when who you are shows up, when what you're doing shows up, when you unleash all that fear, when you let go and you liberate your heart, you liber you, you, here you are, this is me world, I'm out here doing my thing. When you get to the point of accepting all of that about yourself, that self-confidence, that self-assuredness, you've liberated yourself. You've liberated yourself from fear. You've liberated, liberated yourself from judgment. You've liberated yourself from any of those things that got you caught up to begin with. You also give permission for other people to begin to liberate themselves. That is when you are, know you've gone and slithered through the egoic traps. Trust me, just as confidence and love and your spirit guides show up and your angels show up, so do the naughty bits. They show up too. Remember, I'm always going to talk about balance. Fear is at one end of the pantry, love's at the other end of the back pantry. As we grow and move forward and expand and do our thing, we have to always understand we're tuning into something all the time. We might land at one thing. Got it. Got it. Great. I'm going. Yes, I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. Then the next thing here, we got to go do this. The more we stay in that, oh, great space, great place, the more we exercise that. Yep, I got it. I'm doing it. And we're moving forward with it. The less and less and less power the fears have because the history that we're beginning to create of the manifestation that we've made happen because we've overcome these little quirks we undid them deprogrammed them and really tuned into our life as it should be the more we follow that the less the other has a hold on us and i think that's a place to stop um before i get into this where is it the book oh it's gone oh there it is yeah. hiding under my uh, my keyboard the more I get into this, um, <clears throat> I have been feeling for a while an energy that seems to come in um, and almost speak without me thinking about what I'm saying. Some might call it channeling, channeling, but I call it the conversation with guides. Um, and I've learned now, oh, OK, because I've played back my videos and watched them because I think, gosh, I don't even remember saying that. I don't even remember saying that, which is really what happens when I'm doing intuitive readings, when I'm when I'm when I'm intuit tuning into somebody and getting information for them. It just floats through me after I've done it and the energy's passed. I don't retain and remember a thing. So what I'm working on now, which I'm sharing with you because you're my friends and you're listening, um, is I'm, I'm working on having them identify themselves more. My feeling is that it's me and my job to give them a name or to give them an energy. Um, I was listening to some of the podcasts from the delightful Diana Cooper yesterday. Uh, what a delightful, lovely British woman she is. And her, her messages, her voice, her what she has to say is so lovely. I mean, it was a bit like she could be talking about the apocalypse and you'd think that you were on some magical mystery tour ride. I mean, it's, um, <laughs> I was delighted that, wow, okay, this is something else. And she says, my guides. 
So uh, she doesn't refer to them by name. My guides are telling me this. She's confident that whatever guides are talking to her are talking to her. My point in telling you this, this is what comes through when I get on a roll and I pull these cards and I speak to you about following your bliss, how the ego comes in. It feels as if I've got the great teacher uh, coming forward and delivering the message. So always be grateful for the symbols and the signs that you get. Always be grateful for the message to receive and don't feel bad about, well, I didn't really get much from that. Move on. We are wired to keep moving forward. We are on this earth, in this purpose, to want more, to get bigger, to grow wider, to grow deeper and to continue our journey as we are and as we're not, sifting through the sorting office of what works, what doesn't work, and balancing the journey of bliss, which is, you know, the fear over the love and, and working that. Um, I hope all this makes sense. Um, and 26, I've tried to get 20 minutes into the chit chat and then go into all of this, but we're a little over this morning. Felt like that was important to tell you. Let's get to uh, uh, Melody Beatty's Journey to the Heart. Um, and line it up with the Lord's message. August 15th and the day is spinning our wheels is part of getting unstuck. When our car gets stuck in the mud or snow, we immediately try to get out. Sometimes we have to spin our wheels to get a rocking motion going. Sometimes we have to try harder, then try again before we get out. Sometimes spinning our wheels digs us in more deeply. Then, in frustration, we let go, relax. Soon, we find ourselves doing what we need to get, doing what we need to get unstuck. We ask for help or figure out another approach. That's how it is on our journey. We may find ourselves in a situation we don't know how to handle. So we start spinning our wheels in frustration, confusion or fear. We, what we know is what we want. Sometimes we need to let get through that time of spinning our wheels in order to get to the next place. The place where we slow down and figure it out to figure out what to do next. Sometimes our frustration helps generate energy to get momentum going in the general direction of solving the problem. Put forth that energy, getting the steam built up. It tells us the universe is ready for us to be free. If you find yourself spinning your wheels, be gentle with yourself. Slow down. Get a nice rocking motion going. One that's rhythmic, powerful. One that's enough to free you. Then put the car in gear, step on the gas and gently drive out of the muck. Sometimes we need to spin our wheels. It helps us get unstuck. You know, frustration is the result of having an expectation and pushing too quickly forward and it not lining up. The time, days, weeks, months, hours, years, decades, life, works on a physical plane. Yes, we need a clock. Yes, we need a day. Yes, we need segments to do certain things. Yes, 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 yes. The physical way our world works is based on time. The spiritual way our world works is either instantaneous or spatial. Instantaneous is where what we desire has already shown up somewhere. And those instances are the times that we realize, well, wait a minute, I was just thinking about, it. I needed that, there it is. Because 
the spiritual world, your spirit guides, those magical people that work when you don't realize they're there, has already gone ahead and made that happen because you already manifested it in some kind of thought or dream at some point. Unfortunately, the physical ego that is so entrenched in the time and the clock and the days and the years hasn't quite worked that out. And (laughs) when you do work it out that all time is the same, what you want instantly can manifest instantly. And what you want instantly that you think will manifest instantly doesn't creates that frustration, which is why it's time to redirect your energy into something that will work and know that whatever you wanted that isn't yet manifested is coming, but the time you want it to come isn't universal time. It's different. Keep on bringing the focus to it. Maybe you have to do a bit more work on manifesting it. Maybe you have to get the... uh, What I know for sure and I know this, I really know this because it works. When you develop the feeling of it, when you develop that excitement of it, when you stay in that gratitude place of, oh goodness, this is so great, even though whatever you're looking for wanting hasn't come, will you generate the feeling that it's already here, imagining it as it's in front of you, being excited by it, boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, does that go wallop and come. It's quite instant because the seeing and the believing of something that isn't yet physical is the manifestation of it. Because you can't see something, whether it's spiritually or mentally, if it really isn't there. Which is why, you know, in creative visualization, we talk about what does your first day look like in your office? What is it, the the letter or the email? Are they going to tell you an email? Are they going to tell you a letter? Are you going to get a phone call? And we start to manifest this idea that, oh, I don't know. Well, you need to know if you want that job. You need to know where in that place are you going to put your office? And what's your first day look like? What are you bringing to the table for that position that you've got? It's a bit like you've got an opportunity to have an interview. Well, then go the whole hog. Imagine you've got the job because what would be the point applying if you didn't want the job? This is the challenge anything applying for a mortgage you got to see the house you got to see your your stuff in it i'm going way off topic we came to well i'm not really confidence spinning your wheels frustration let's get on with the meditation otherwise we'll be here all day all right eyes down feet flat on the floor one big breath in and a nice big stretch open up your whole physical body think of this body being bigger than you and Open your chest, your arms, stretch your muscles. Be in the bigness that you have. Get the sense that you've got the right to be on the planet, your feet on the floor, your crown to the ceiling. Everything about you is absolutely positively glorious. Get that into your mindset. What does it feel like to be glorious? What does it feel like to be confident? to be able to command whatever it is you want. Now take a big breath in. Release out, let go. Begin to crank up the expression of your breath as you are. Be in the physicalness of the breath coming into your body. And the release on the exhalation. Being present to the power of your breath in the environment that you're in brings you right here, right now, void of any other plane or time. Use your mind to settle down to the space that you're in. 
Take your mind consciousness, your focus to the soles of your feet. Beneath the soles of your feet, about four to five inches, is a chakra known as the soul star. Earth star. Below that is the opening to the depths and the love of the Mother Earth, known as Gaia's Gateway. The Gaia's Gateway is holding your root, keeping you grounded, removing all of the unpleasant, negative, wasteful, unserving energies, thoughts, feelings, pulling them down as fuel to be transferred and transformed into the fuel that is needed, the fuel that will be replaced. And from Gaia's gateway deep within the core of the earth itself, You come up to your earth star below your feet. Come up to the feet that are on the floor. Use your mind to ground your toes, the tops of your feet, to allow the bones of your legs to relax down. The softness in your knees. Relax the power from your thighs, upper leg bones. Relax your hip joints where they fix the edges of your pelvis. Relax your pelvic bowl. Relax your pubic bone. Soften and relax your genital area, your buttocks. The area around your solar plexus allow your inner organs to relax. Bring that relaxation energy up into your belly. Allow your belly to be relaxed. Allow the muscles of your belly to be relaxed. Move up into your rib cage and let all the bones of your ribs just take a sigh of relief and relax. Allow your lungs to fill and empty in a relaxing, soft, rhythmic way. With all this relaxation from your chest to your feet and below, gives your heart a soft beating, no pressure. The blood is relaxing and sending joy throughout your body, feeding all of the cells, lubricating and feeding all of your organs. With your attention rising to your collarbones, the left one and the right one. And into your back where your scapula is, relax the tendons and muscles. The hinges that allow your shoulders to rotate and move. Take the area right beside your neck, deep down into your shoulders where your muscles are, your deltoids, trapezium muscles. Allow all of that tension. To relax, 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 relax. Release, 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 release. Let go, let go, let go. Bring your mind to your left arm, the bicep, the tricep, down to the elbow. Left forearm and wrist and all five left fingers. Soften, relax. Be free and easy. And focus your energy on your right clavicle bone, right shoulder cap, the upper right bone, 
out to the muscle tricep bicep into the elbow and down the forearm relax your right wrist and all five right fingers allow your right arm from shoulder to fingertips to be relaxed take a breath have a rest Move your attention to your neck and your throat, the base of your skull. When you relax the muscles of your neck, find the softness in your jaw hinge. Allow your teeth and their roots to be relaxed in the bed of your gums. Move your attention to your upper jaw the roof of your mouth. Relax your nasal passages and soften your ear canals. Be intentional about hearing only joyful, peaceful, loving, kind messages. Move your focus to your third eye centre, your brow area. Open your third eye centre. Think of yourself as looking through a frameless window. A view that you get to choose. Allow your eyelashes, eyelids eyebrows and forehead to soften and relax. And above your brow line, above the tops of your ears, focus your attention on the crown, the top pad of your skull. The super soft area that has the ability to open and open that area now. Your seventh chakra. Bring to focus colour violet. If you can, picture a glorious violet flame being powered by the power that created you. Draw the violet flame upward Allow it to reach your soul star, the chakra, four to six inches above your head. With the warmth and the power and the magic of the violet flame. See it awakening and opening. The stellar gateway. wide open ring the gateway to the ethers the rest of the galaxy on up to source energy allow the source energy to fuel your violet flame Breathe in deep. Take in that energy from the violet flame, pull it into your lungs and down into your body. Gently let your breath be easeful, your lungs be easeful and allow whatever else is not serving you to float down through your feet into the root of Mother Earth. With each breath in, draw down the protective energy 
from Source God Universe that replenishes, recharges, rejuvenates your entire physical, mental, emotional and particularly your spiritual being. All parts of you are now one, energised, refuelled, working together. Continue breathing, bringing focus to the tuning, subtleties of the love and energy from Source. I invite you to press pause at this video and continue relaxing, vibrating, basking in the violet flame, being replenished by the bright white light of Source. When you feel complete, bring your hands to prayer at heart centre. Give thanks and honour the spirit guides that have come for you, the angels that are guiding you, the spirits and guides of those loved ones that have passed into spirit that continue to work for you. your thumb knuckles to your third eye center and together we honor each other and the light within each of us as we bow and say namaste thank you my friends i love you so much for coming in every day and giving me a platform to chit chat with and offer you something bigger um so um we'll chat soon have a great sunday bye